Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna go over a minimal track that I did about a year ago or so. The track is titled Drum and Strum and in it, I wanted to do something that is a little bit minimal but still has some nice harmonies and melodies. So first, we're gonna listen to the track, different sections of it, and then we're gonna start going over the different channels. So like I said, this track is about a year old and when I, op when I opened the project again, unfortunately there were some samples missing. So as we will go over them, you'll, you know, unfortunately, yeah, you'll notice that some of the channels, I think a few hats and one Ableton drum kit or something like that are not, um, I couldn't find them, uh, but the bulk of the track, the important parts, the bass and the, the pads and whatnot are all there. So for all intents and purposes, I think this is still going to be something interesting. So let's start it off with the kick. Um, well, actually before, uh, I just want to, you know, I want you to note that when I started, when I start a track, I usually like to set uh, a tempo and in this since I'm going for something a little bit more on the mellow side I went with 124 BPM and the track is a little bit swung I think I was using the swing SP 1216th step uh, 58 um, and I think I played a little bit with it till it sounded um, good to my ears other than that whenever I started track I like to begin with picking a kick and since I was going for something a little bit uh, on the minimal side usually the tracks that I was referencing had softer types of kicks so I was looking for something like that and when we look at the kick channel um, you can see here is something that I usually do um, I I go over my samples and pick a number of different kicks and um, place them and then compare and contrast. In this track in particular, uh, I, I did a little bit of a layering. So I had um, a 909 kick as a top and an 808 as a bottom. Um, let me see if we can hear that. Okay, so... Um, so this is the top, and as you can see, I've, I've cut out certain frequencies. I'm using a little bit of reverb on it, and I'm using the RX950 to give it a little bit of, sat I don't know, I don't think it's saturation, a little bit of gain and some texture. 
and then below it is the main there's like the actual kick as you can see uh it's definitely missing that top end at least for what i was doing it's a subtle difference with the top with the 909 but i like it, um i like it this way mm. And so in this, I, I think in this particular uh, track, I was following a tutorial of some sort, which is something I usually do whenever I'm working, um, whenever I'm working on a track, I, I like to watch a breakdown. And I think they were, whoever it was, they were doing something with the AQ that resembled this. And I was following along and I think it sounded good to my ears. So I kept it. Um, but going back to the 808, again, like I was cutting some frequencies from the top since I had the 909 and also used the RX 950 for the gain. Um, for this little chain, there's a decapitator, uh, which is one of my favorite plugins. It's good for a little bit of like distortion or saturation. And then we have a saturation knob. I think this is from Wave or Soft Tube. Okay. Um, and then some com compression. Let's. So this is without this chain. And here is with the chain. Then um, I usually, uh, I don't think this is too necessary, but I usually like to try to put a limiter on the kick because I don't like it to go too high. Oh. Moving on, then we've got the bass, and the bass is, uh, let me kill this noise thing. Okay. I think it's, okay. I, I used a little bit of hiss, but it's going to be a little bit annoying since it's, we're going to go over the track. Um, so again, also with the bass, uh, it's it's three layers. We have the sub bass uh, and the, like sort of the higher frequencies in the middle. So, and as for the notes, I think this is one of my favorite basses um, that I did. I really like the notes that I came up with. And again, how I came up with this, I just, you know, I, I know the key for the track and I just place notes in different places until it sounds good to my ears. And usually I would start with a with like a I guess a four bar loop and then extend it as I as I go. And so this is just the sub. As you can see with each iteration, I try to do a little bit of a variation so it stays interesting. I'm also like playing with the velocities and I have it set to the swing. I think all the channels or like all the tracks are set to the swing as well. Uh, as for the sub, it's, it's purely the, an Ableton preset, new old sub. Then we have the mini V. In that one, um, let's take a look and see what preset that is. Cause I hear a little bit of delay and maybe some chorus or just ping pong delay. It's classic square. If this is from the Artoria collection. Yeah, you have a, you have chorus going on, which is giving it that stereo sound. Uh, the the main part or like the main like sound is the profit. Unfortunately, I need to update it here because it's giving me some issues. But but it, like luckily it's working and you can hear how it sounds. I think on its own, the profit sounds pretty good already, um, but I think I was just going ahead and adding layers as it's, uh, this is one of the first tracks that I did and there's a tendency for new pro producers. I still do this to this day is like, 
always layering things because feeling like, oh, what I've done is not enough. I need more sounds. I need more sounds. Uh, on the main channel, I have a drum bus. And Capitator, again, is probably the beefy preset, which is like for bass. And uh, side compression to go with the kick. Uh, so it's like, so it doesn't mess with the kick. So hearing this whole thing together, just the bass. And let's see what the drum bus is doing. It's definitely giving it a little bit of an oomph. And I think the same thing with the decapitator. Uh, let's move on. So then um, the clap, again, like the clap was a result of numerous layers. Uh, numerous samples stacked on top of each other. I think, um, so you can see here, this is the recorded clap eventually. Again, this is like an also an older version of the project because in the final version, I've cut it into different bits and I was playing in each, uh, in each part, each segment in the track, it was a little bit different. Um, but let's hear the actual like cl uh, clap. There is um, some automation with the phaser flanger, which is something I like. So it keeps things interesting, as you can see here. Uh, let's show automation. So every now and then I turn on this uh, this flanger, which is working not so much as a phaser, but almost like as a sh very quick and snappy delay. Let's hear it. And, I, and hopefully I've recorded this into the sample, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, there's um, there's an issue with the recording here, but how it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to like be with the phaser flanger. Um, but what I tend to do um, whenever I'm working on a track and I'm getting to the to the final stages and I'm confident with all with all what I've done, some of the channels I like to um, just record them and turn them into into audio, and then after that I can mess with the transients, and so I can like change them throughout the track and make it a little bit more interesting. Moving on, then I have here uh, two rim, two different rim shots. I think they're each is panned one to the left went to the right and in a little bit of like a call and response thing. We'll hear one of them now. The other. Um, yeah, so nothing too crazy here. Uh, it's just I, it's also like, again, it's also something that I've layered. We have a 909 sample and a 505 together. I think the 505 is barely, I, I can't even hear it coming through, so it's really not necessary. I don't know why I kept that, but I think in the spur of the moment, um, it sounded good to my ears or I was trying to do something where I thought it was interesting. But as you can see, a lot of these things in the final project, you're like, I'm not sure if this, if this makes sense. Going back, if I was to redo the track or if I was to polish it, I would definitely take the 505 because I don't think it makes sense. In the overall um, group of these two, I also have filter delay. What I was trying to do is I was trying to have like one rim going to the left and one to the right, but then both of them would go to the same filter delay, which would create like, um, like a percussive loop that goes throughout the track. Let's hear it. Let's, let's hear them together, actually. I 
again, like hearing it like uh, on its own doesn't make doesn't make too much sense to me. But in the context of the track, you can hear it like playing a nice role in like accentuating certain parts. Another rim shot, but this is more like a sn I think this is more of a snare sound. Oh, it's also a rim, but more like woody sound, I guess. Oh. I th I'm also hearing some conflicting sounds. Again, if I was to come and do this, I think I would make sure that no two sounds are playing exactly at the same time or like not having the first hit at the same time. But, you know, that's what I did and it's fine. Then we have a clav or a clave. I think it's a clav, and this is a CR seventy eight. I think it's a it's a very old drum machine. I got it from Gold ba Gold Baby Tape Drum Machines, and I'm playing here with the delay and feedback and whatnot to make it sound uh, to give it this kind of uh, interesting effect sound. It's also interesting that um, um, in the automation, as you can see, this is not always happening. Sometimes it happens and, and the other. So it's like one and off. So it keeps things also like interesting. Moving on. And now I have the, these like, um, I think closed hats that go every offbeat. Uh, unfortunately, also, this is one of those tracks that um, I recorded without keeping the original channel. This was interesting because I was also because I remember adding a bit of a phaser flanger thing with the feedback turned all the way up, but with the dry wet on a very low setting. So it produces this tonal tail to the to the hat every now and then you will hear it. So it's a very basic closed hat. It's probably a closed uh, 808 or 909, nothing too crazy there. Um, but as you can hear, there's like a little tail of it. I really like how this sounds uh, in the context of the whole track. I think it sounds really, really unique here. Then we have the, um, I think these are more of open hats here that, that like come in at later parts in the track. So, I also think I'm, I'm panning one. I have two samples here, one to the left and one to the right. And here's the one to the left. It's a, this is coming from a Chris Tussie pack. And what I'm using here, I'm using the delay to the the Ableton delay on ping pong setting with a little bit of a difference between the left and right and no feedback to give it a, a little bit of a stereo uh, sound. Oh, hold on. You can you can hear with the with the delay it sounds far more panned in a in a unique way and also I use the RX nine hundred fifty to give it some like some gain and this one is a nine oh nine it's straight up from Ableton uh, sample on this one I added mm, the chorus and the RX and some transient like a transient shaper to like sharpen the to give it like a little bit of um, so it comes out a little bit clearer in the mix.
Okay, interesting. So this is the whole off hat. This is the whole like hat uh, channel, and I think this is where the uh, the phaser flanger that I was talking about. And as you can see, it's set to one point two. And I thought I had it only to one channel, but I guess I had it on, as you can see, on a bunch of them. And and on the on the whole group, I also have an equalizer just to take the low end off. Um, and on the whole hat section, I'm adding a little bit of a um, saturator. Let's see what else is there here. Yeah, unfortunately, these I think these few channels are not coming up. They're from a I think from a jazz from a jazz drum kit that I that I took out because it was taking too much space and I wasn't using it like frequently. This is also like more of a live kit sounding hat and I'm adding a little bit of a convulsion, convolution reverb with RX950 and the chorus ensemble. And my goal with these different hats was that I wanted to create an atmosphere where it had a little bit of a jazzy feel that every now and then you would hear a different hat coming, coming up from a different sound and from a different like panning. So I wish if I'm going to link the full version of the track that I eventually like put out and in that version you will probably be able to pick up these sounds but I wish it was here so you can see the effect that these different hats uh, create in the whole track. Then I have an 808 closed hat that goes off um, every 16th beat. This is probably from also Gold Baby. Yeah, it doesn't say that, but I think it's from Gold Baby. It's like an 808 uh, recorded on a tape machine. There's uh, the RX950 again, and I'm also using the delay, the same delay like quote unquote trick uh, to make it a little bit sound, uh, like give it a little bit of a stereo image, and then some saturation with Decapitator. This uh, this 808 closed hat comes off in the in the second half of the track, and it's as you can hear it's very subtle, but it adds um, a good amount of movement and energy. So it definitely gives a different vibe compared to the first half of the track. Then there's this crash that lands on key points of the track after the break and different times. As you can see, this is a 909 crash. Also, I think this is from samples from Mars. Yeah, 909 from Mars. And it's like a, it's like a choked crash. Uh, I, I'm using the classic sound, but also with a, with a very short, the short, with the short decay or short loop time. Let's, let's see how it looks. Yeah, as you can see, as you can see it, uh, it, it's very much choked using this like loop thing function. And then I have the equalizer to take off the low frequencies, RX950 to give it some gain, the transient shaper to make it like more to stand out in the mix. Uh, I would have used a chorus ensemble to make it a little bit wider, but I think I did that later with the delay and then some convolution reverb. That's pretty much it. 
And here's, uh, I think this is just the same sample in reverse, but it kind of sounding weird in this particular version of the project. So I'm not, not, not totally happy with it, but I think I did the same thing, except it's just the sample in reverse, in reverse. After that, we have a jazz kit. This is from Ableton and I cannot figure out why it's not, it didn't come up. And I looked for it here and I couldn't find it. I wonder if it's from when I used to have the older Ableton 10. I'm running 11 right now. But what this kit is, is it ha I'm, cl I'm clicking bun a bunch of j snare brushes and I think hat brushes. So it's basically more snares and more hats in the track. And that's the idea that I was going for. I wanted to have a really like... I wouldn't say a complicated groove, but a unique and intricate groove of different things playing at different times. And this was another way to do it. Um, you can you can exchange this uh, jazz brush kit with any kit, but just make sure it's that the hits or the samples are not too overwhelming or not too coming off like in the front of the mix, but more in the background. And I think this kit was like perfect for that. Uh, after that, we, there are two shakers that I'm using in this track that, that I think go through the play throughout the track, except in the drops or whatever. Let's listen to it. So the first one is basically from one of Ableton's uh, packs. It's called Chop and Swing. I'm doing some free, like some equalizing here, just taking all the frequencies that I don't want and only keeping the small part, using the delay stereo trick again here. And that's pretty much it. If I was to do it differently, I would send it to the reverb or I would put um, a hybrid reverb so to give it certain space. Because I think to, to my ears right now, this sounds a little bit too dry. And in terms of the actual like notes here, this is not set to the groove. Unlike I think everything else is set to the groove, except this one. Um, it's just uh, playing a little bit with the velocity sensitivity, and that's it. And I used another one, another sample here, which is coming from Ableton's core library, similar stuff. This one is going through Kickstarter, so it like it ducks with the kick. I think the other one should have that, but I don't know why. I think I think I forgot or something, but I what I what again what I would do differently is I would group them together and have them both go through this this kickstart plugin. So so they would have this ducking effect with the kick which would give them even more movement in the track. So let's hear the other one. As I'm like hearing the here playing each one, the, the, I feel to me they really complement each other in the track. I wouldn't like to have one without the other. So that's probably why I used both. And then I'm using Batu, what is it called? Batu kit, which is uh, basically congas and a kick or whatever. Um, To me, this, uh, these few hits are pretty important in the track because I feel they set the mood, those conga hits and their timing, give it that very mellow atmosphere. Then there's another tom.
I'm not doing anything interesting here. It's just the RX 950 with a little bit of gain. And this is coming from chop, again, from chop and swing, but it sounds like an 808 Tom. So you could just do that. Now we're getting to some loops that I've been using in the track. Um, there's the bongo loop. I think this is also coming from Ableton. Yep, just from the core library. Again, I'm doing the delay thing and no, not set to the groove, no like uh, adjusting anything, it's just straight up as is. The only thing I did differently here or that I, that I adjusted to it is I changed, shaved off a lot of the transient. So it's like very, not shaved the transient, but I don't know what do you call this thing really, but um, cut off a lot of uh, what comes after the, the tail of the transients, I guess. And I set and I like to do this, and it's set to like a very low um, volume in the mix, sitting so it's sitting really down in the mix because it's just something that is filling all this empty space. Now, in most of my tracks, I like, I like to have a few loops going in because I think they create uh, an interesting bed of percussions. That is, while it's barely audible, I think not having it is more apparent. It sounds like a little bit empty to my ears. So I like doing that. I'm also doing the same thing here, but it's, um, but it's, like, a, but it's like a break beat loop or something. Also with the delay, some decapitator. I was I was considering do, using the looperator, which is like an effect, like a multi-effect uh, plugin that puts certain effects at different times. But I think it was a bit too much, and it was sounding a little bit gimmicky in this one, so I took it off. I have a third one here, but this one is a little bit, uh, has a bunch of stuff going on. So it has the equalizer, uh, taking some frequencies off and decapitator delay filter. That's like, um, that has uh, some LFO going. So it's going back and forth and a, fa uh, and a phaser. I think it's, um, it's a f phaser feedback uh, preset. As you can hear, it's mainly, it sounds like a interesting percussive sound that is a little bit on the pa panned on the left and right. I don't think this one is apparent, is as apparent as the other two, especially like in the final like version of the track. So, but I think I just kept it because I felt it added a little bit um, of something. Now to the melody. Um, <laughs> the melody is just uh, an operator with some FM action. It's just the, the first is the sine wave, and the second operator is four on the course and just turned up a little bit. Let's let's hear it first. I, for me, I think uh, if I was to do this again, I would probably just keep the operator because I, I don't I'm not sure I like how the wavetable is sounding or how they're both sounding together. Um, but I'm cutting off the low frequencies, putting it in chorus, adding some echo, uh, no reverb, no movement, and uh, auto filter that set to an LFO that goes back and forth. Decapitator, did we have that in the beginning? No. Capitator, and I think it's adding a little bit too much distortion to this one. Uh, compressor and phaser flanger.
Yeah, and wavetable, there is literally very little going on here. It's just two sine wave oscillators, and I'm using three voices on the shimmer with 12%. Um, they're both a little bit uh, plucky, so that's, that's pretty much that. And in terms of the notes, I, I believe this is just a riff on the bass, on the bass line, if it's not even like exactly the same. There's another melody that comes at the end of the track, which I think is my favorite part of it. Uh, I really like this one and how it sounds. This is something that I've added at, after many, many iterations of working on it because I just wanted something interesting that comes at the end. And it's Artoria's emulator. Bass marimba, and I, th I wonder what the second one is. Dirty EP. Nice. I like I like how it sounds. I think they really sound good together. Uh, one is more like plucky and the other is a little bit, has, has a longer decay. Uh, and I run them through some equalizer, uh, a little bit of chorus, and I have echo that I think is automated. Not sure. But this thing is totally turned off, so I don't think, I think I added it, but I felt it was too, so this thing is totally turned off, so I think I've added it and then felt it was too much and unnecessary. Then there's the movement uh, plugin from Output. I have mixed feelings about this plugin. When I first got it, um, I really liked uh, the concept of it and the, and the interface. But going through the presets, it's really hard to find something that sounds good. Most of the presets, I feel very unsure of whether I like what they add or not. And also it takes, it's, it takes forever to load. And sometimes you set in a preset and when you load the project again, um, it doesn't come up as the right preset. So it's a little bit buggy. I'm not, I don't want to even bother with that. I, I worry that it would crash the whole project. Okay. So this is what it is. I think it's four to three is what the preset is called. Let's hear if it's doing anything. I, I'll take that back. I. I I like what it's doing. I think it's doing a little bit of delay and gating the sound and, and it sounds, it's, it's very subtle, but it's interesting. Again, like it, I'm pretty sure it took me forever to find a preset that I like, so I'm not sure if it's worth it. I don't know what, what is going on here. It's probably trying to clean. Um, Yeah, so with marimba sounds, I feel there are a lot of like high frequencies that can be a little bit intense in the mix. So I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not, but this is what I did. And I think it made it a little bit less harsh. But yeah, but that's it. After that, there is the jazz guitar. Uh, and this is also one of the main parts in the track. It's basically... A jazz, um, a jazz guitar sample. It's like a chord strum that I got, uh, also from Ableton, an Ableton kit. Um, I really, I'm really proud how much Ableton samples I've used in this one. I really, I really went ham on it. Um, And 
and you can also hear movement doing the same thing as it is doing in the other uh, in, the, in the melody. Um, so what this is, uh, it's just a straight up sample playing um, at the beginning of every like I think eight bars or whatever, and then I have the echo delay switch from dotted to notes, which gives it this sort of sucked out and brought back in sound. Let's because it's also automated, so let's take a look. So right after I play the note, I change it from dotted to notes. So it so it sort of um, makes it a little bit, drops it down in frequency and then change it back to dot and it pulls it back again. I like that effect and um, and I like that it's going throughout the track. It's, you know, it's my, it's, I guess, the main idea of this track. Um, but in terms of anything else, just has reverb, movement, some filter that changes the capitator to give it a little bit more, a little bit of saturation. Um, and compressor for side chaining as it's playing at the same time as the kick. So that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Um, then there is a vocoder, which I think I was the, doing this wheelie trick, um, which is having drums that go through a vocoder and an operator, but I'm not sure why that's not playing when I was testing the track. It's supposed to be taking audio from a certain signal, but it's not here in this version, so yeah, that's that. And when I compared the um, when I compared the final version to this one, I really couldn't hear it. So, so I don't think it was that important anyway. Then we have a operator that plays almost every 16th bit, every 16th like um, step and with some, with some variation in the velocity and some swing. And this is because I wanted to add um, a tonal percussive sound to the track. It's like a tonal bed when that 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 ha that it sits like in the bottom and everything is like going around going around it. Again, this is something you can barely hear, but to me it adds an interesting depth to the whole track. Um, nothing too complicated, it's just operator with the second operator going on course five and like increase the level a little bit. Um, it, has a, it has a tiny bit of attack, so it's not too, um, it's not too hard hitting. So it's a little bit uh, smoothed out. There is, um, EQing as always and um, chorus filter filtering out most of the sound. As you as you heard, it's really harsh without the filter. I wouldn't do it without the filter. Then it goes through corpus, and I think this is just one of the presets that I found. Uh, movement and decapitator. Let's hear what corpus is doing. It's giving it like an interesting depth or interesting layer. Okay, um, after that we have uh, this um, FX sound. And it is basically, what is this? I think this is a, a preset, Ableton preset. Oh. This is just what it sounds. I put a little bit of chorus, some some echo, and then I'm using this effect uh, called Echo Bode, and I'm using the endorphins preset, and that's what's giving it this crazy uh, this crazy sound. I've used this in multiple tracks uh, with different like with different instruments, and I really like the effect it creates. 
and there's like a little bit of a filter so it, to make it like less intense. Moving forward, we have the chords and this is, let's see where this is from. This is from Silat Bexi and I'm just playing um, the chord and two octaves, two different octaves. Some EQing, some saturator, uh, reverb. I'm trying to make it a little bit wider here. And then some filter, echo, frequency shifter. I'm not sure if this does anything, honestly. I can't hear what this is doing. And then there's a Kickstarter, so it's like, um, again, this is just uh, side chaining with the kick. The whole purpose of this chord is to give like more of a call and response between um, between it and the jazz chord that plays in the beginning. I also have multiple different chords going on to give to do this like call and response thing. So let's hear this one. This is more of an effect type sounds like just like a, but it's coming from. Where is this coming from? Show the answer. Oh, it's coming from Flug Sample Market. This is what it sounds like. But I think I'm just using like a tiny bit of the sample and using the filter um, and doing like some modulation. As you can see, it goes completely off to give it that like sound. Um, trying to make it wider with the stereo, uh, using some echo and Kickstarter for so it doesn't conflict with the kick, but I don't think it does. This is the same sample and the same everything going on, except uh, instead, of, instead of the modulation going down, I think this one is going up. With a little bit, uh, is it more delay? It's like, is it, the delay sounds more apparent in this one. something similar with a different sample that goes both in two octaves. And this is coming from Distilled Noise, one of micro house sample packs, some saturation, some chorus ensemble, echo, reverb. I'm curious what the, what the modulation is like here. Okay. So yeah, nothing too complicated, just uh, pushing the filter up really quickly. After that, we have the pad, which goes throughout the track. And basically it's a sample from a generate sample pack. And I've stacked four different iterations of the same sample. One, like one pan to the left, one to the right. And um, some are transposed differently. So one in 19, one minus 12, which is just, I guess, um, an octave below, and one an octave above. Shaved off the low frequencies, added saturator, some echo, reverb, filter, and some modulation that like, some automation that goes out throughout the track. Nothing too complicated and used movement and kickstart to give it a little bit of um, ducking feeling. I really like this particular sample. It sounds so nice and so lush. Like, um, what I, 
what I usually do is whenever I'm making a track and selecting a key, I usually go over all the samples that I have and see if I have anything interesting, whether it's a bass, whether it's a chord or a pad, even if it's a melody. Sometimes I wouldn't like use the exact bass or anything, but I would take ideas from it. There are certain bass loops that sound really good and they're in the same key. So what you can do is you can convert them into MIDI and use them as a melody instead of a bass or use them however you like. Um, or like also if it's a bass, you could you could sample it and use the use the bass plug and create your own bass. There are different ways to do this. This is a nice lush uh, preset from Ableton. It's called Basic DigiPad. Again, I'm taking some low frequencies, the chorus ensemble, echo, reverb, the whole shebang. I think the only thing I'm doing differently this time is I'm using this type of filter and I forgot what it's what it was called. It's not, I think it's band pass. Also having like a low pass. With the automation only like at the break points, only at the, like um, at the end of the break and then some delay and kickstart. Let's hear. I'm moving on. This is the same, I, I think, is it? I think it's the same generate priest like uh, sample. Where was it? Yeah, I think it's the same. And, but this time I'm using it a little bit differently. So it's playing at different times and also playing the two octaves, C3 and C2. And there's a filter, a little bit of delay, some reverb, kickstart movement. That's pretty much it. And this plays at the second half of the track. So what I try to do whenever like I'm working on a track, I try to have certain elements come at different parts. This is an old way of how I used to do it. I think now I would mix and match. So not everything like so it's not like the first half is the lighter part and the second half is the more denser part, but rather I like to have mixes and matches. So certain parts come at the beginning and certain parts come in the end, certain parts only come in the break. But again, this is something I did a while back and I think it's good for what it is. This is an effect sound from, from Profit, uh, the Artoria plugin. It's called, it's called Dune, it's pretty nice. I like how this one sounds, again, chorus, echo, reverb, taking off the low frequencies and some of the highs. And I think it has too much in the saturation, it sounds a bit distorted to me, but you know, that's how, that's how I did it. And like the point of this is not to show like a perfect track, but to show something that I did. Okay, I really like this one. This is a DX7, again, Ortoria from the B collection. It's the laser gun. Let's, let's see what it sounds like without all the effects. That's pretty much it. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm automating the delay time to give it this like uh, sucked in and pulled back feeling. Some, you know, the reverb, filter, like EQing, 
and some decapitator. That's pretty much it. Oh, this one, the sample is not working. I, I, I think I suspect it's probably either like a laser type sound or a chord sound. Okay, then we have this uh, this almost like pad like sound. It's coming from a loop that I'm that that I'm going over it using sampler or simpler, and it plays only in the break. As you can see, there's like a bunch of bells and whistles here. Um, let's just, let's take a look. So this is what the sample, the original sample sounds like. It's really beautiful. Um, what I do is I, I put it in sampler. Yeah, this is sampler. And I loop a small part and I filter it out so it sounds more like a pad and I'm also playing it through in three over three different octaves. Oh, and I think that's pretty much it. That was um, that didn't take too long. This was the second take I did. Um, after the last part is um, I have this uh, real bus which I'm using um, to give it to give the track some some hissing sound. It's also side chained with the kick um, to have this uh, ducking effect. And it's like very subtle though. It's not. It's not too crazy. At the end, um, I have the I have different sends and returns. Um, I have the Valhalla Vintage, um, which I have like set to four seconds. Echo. I'm not. I don't think I'm even using it. And what I'm using is the brute compression, which is like a very intense compressor that I send the whole drum bus to, um, but not too much. So um, a fair amount of the drum bus sent to it to give the drums a bit more presence in the mix. And you could try it out for yourself and see how, how it sounds. So let's give it a listen, actually. It's pretty subtle, but to me, it's now I almost always do this. It definitely makes the drums sound a little bit chunkier. Uh, at the end, um, I'm doing what some people call like a like a DJ um, master, which is basically throwing in a compressor and a maximizer and just using some of the presets. So I'm using LL, uh, SSL compressor from Waves and I'm using the mastering preset, and then I have it going to multi-maximizer and using high-res CD master. I'm not sure if, it's sh if it should go in this order. I think it should, um, like the compressor first, then the maximizer. Uh, if anyone has tips on this and how to make it like better, I guess, I would love to hear that. Um, <clears throat> but actually, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I was planning to talk a little bit about the arrangement, but I think I will I will do a separate video that specifically talks about arrangement in general, because um, I feel this video has gone for long enough or already as it is. I'm trying to see how long it's been going for, but yeah, it's almost an hour now, so I think that's uh, that's more than enough. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you gained anything. I hope you enjoyed this video for what it is. And I'm going to keep doing more of these. I have a bunch of tracks that I have not shared yet. So I'm looking forward uh, to sharing them and to also break them apart because I think it it gives an interesting insight even to me going over this there are some things that I used to do that I forgot that I'm that I'm a little bit excited to try again. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're interested in this type of content and DJ mixes and whatever, hit the subscribe. Otherwise I'll see you, uh, hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.